Okay, welcome to the further adventures of Heat Lost versus Heat Gained. In the other examples that we've done, we've had a hot material and a cold material meeting, and the hot material has lost energy, given it to the cold material, and they've met at some final temperature. But there's other ways to get energy besides just pouring hot water on something. One of the ways that you can produce energy is by having a chemical reaction happen. In this problem, the energy that heats something up isn't coming from hot material, it's coming from a chemical reaction. In this case, barium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid fight, and when they do, they release some energy, and that heats up the water that they're floating in. So, let's see how we can analyze this. I've written out the reaction already to save a little bit of time, and we must balance it before we go on. This side has two hydroxides on it, so we'll double our water. That means we have two hydrogens, so we double our hydrochloric acid. And that means we have two chlorides, which is fine. So there it is, balanced. And they've told us we had two mole per liter barium hydroxide. That's its concentration. And the concentration of the hydrochloric is one mole per liter. And the volume of the hydrochloric acid is 0 0.2 liters. And that should be enough for us to get the amount of barium hydroxide. The number of moles of hydrochloric would come from n equals CV. So it's 1 times 0 0.2. Oh, that's not too tough. 0 0.2 moles of hydrochloric acid. Now, if these are reacting, their mole ratio is 2 to 1, meaning ho however much barium hydroxide there is, the hydrochloric is always twice that much, or going the other way, however much hydrochloric you have, you only needed half that much barium hydroxide. So if we had 0.2 moles of hydrochloric, that means we only needed 0.1 moles, half, the, half that amount, 0 0.1 moles of BaOH2. And now that we have that, we can get volume. Volume is how many moles do you need divided by what concentration is your mixture. So that would be 0 0.1 divided by 2 moles per liter would be 0 0.05 liters or 50 milliliters. That's the volume of the barium hydroxide solution. And that takes care of part A. We haven't done any thermochemistry yet. That's coming on in section B, which we're getting into right now. Calculate the delta H, they say, for barium hydroxide. It's molar enthalpy of reaction. Well, we're going to do this, but it's not where we're starting. We're starting on the other end where we know more information. We know that our solution's temperature increased by 11 degrees, they gave us that. How much energy would that have taken? If you're heating up some liquid, the energy required would have been, well, first, what mass are we talking about? What liquid was were these chemicals in? We had 200 mils of hydrochloric acid and we just found there's also 50 mils of barium hydroxide, and we poured those together into a bowl and stirred and mixed them, and that's when the reaction happened. So our total volume is 200 mil plus 50 mil, 250 milliliters, and that's 250 grams when we're talking about water or water-like solutions. That's our M, our specific heat, because again, we're pretending this is water. Most aqueous solutions are pretty close to water, and you can get away with using the water numbers for their specific heat. And the temperature change, they said, was 11 degrees. So how much energy are we talking about? 250 times 4.19 times 11. I get 11,522.5 joules. That's how much energy the water soaked up when this reaction occurred. Now that means that must also be the amount of energy that the reaction put out. When these two chemicals reacted, they put out 11,522.5 joules. So now we can go to the reaction side and say 
the energy from a chemical reaction is equal to N delta H, number of moles of the reacting chemical times its molar enthalpy. And this is what we're trying to find for barium hydroxide. So we know the total energy, 11522.5. That came out of the reaction. The number of moles for barium hydroxide, uh, da, 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 we found that, didn't I? Yeah, it's 0 0.1 moles. We had 0 0.1 moles of barium hydroxide. And then we have our delta H, which we do not know yet. But we can find it if we just divide both sides of this by 0 0.1. Do that, and you get delta H equals 115225 joules. Now, a couple of things we have to fix about that answer. First, should it be positive or negative, and how can you tell? It should be negative because this reaction is exothermic, and we know it's exothermic because when it happened, the water it was floating in got hot. If this were an endothermic reaction, it would have sucked energy out of the water and the water would have cooled down, but they say the temperature increased, which means the reaction released energy, which means this is exo, and it isn't right until you put a negative sign on it here. And the other thing we need to worry about is significant digits. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of numbers here with three sig digs. Yeah, pretty much everything has three sig digs or better. So we have to trim this number down to three sig digs. You could either go to scientific notation and say it's minus 1.15 times 10 to the 5 joules, or you could go to minus 115 kilojoules, and that would do the same thing.